you're only a thermos away from pleasure with Jules and Jim's Joyride. Keep it in the glove box and enjoy. Today's guest has hair that goes all the way down his back, but none on his head. Huh? He's often seen hanging around vending machines with a puppy dog look in the hope of a free Snickers bar. Here's, of course, Harry Hill. Oh, TV well, Thank legend. you so much. Oh. Yes. Thank you so much. How did you get here today? What was your form of transport? Uh, well, I was, oh. I was driving a, um, a car. Yeah. Uh, and I took the South Circular. One of the ancient uh, sacred routes of London. One of the original uh, Anglo-Saxon um, uh, shortcuts. Arterial roads. Yes. <laughs> and then I cut through um, wherever that is. Mm. Woodvale up there. Are you are you a keen motorist? I'm not a very good motorist. I like to drive. I mean, I basically I'm I'm driving a car I don't like. What you know, is I, it? It is a um, Freelander. Mm. It's oh. a white Freelander. So uh, I had trouble looks... with one of them once. Did you? What yeah. was the trouble? I didn't look after it. I've got it new, and I just didn't look after it. I didn't put oil in it. I didn't put, put the tyres up. Nothing. Did, did you clean it? Nothing. I just empty, really left it to rot. Did you empty the ashtrays? The ashtrays in my cars are generally filled with the um, the remnants of boiled sweets. Oh. So it usually tends to glue to the ashtray, <laughs> yeah. and you can never never clean them. Mm. Anyway, so you're free, like you, you, you know, <laughs> you didn't you used to have a Rolls Royce? Yeah. Well, I, so I bought a actually the last car I had. It was a 1980 Silver Shadow 2. Glamorous. Which I bought as a kind of ironic nod to the, you know, light entertainers of the past because they all seemed to me to drive those. So, Did you have um, a, a number plate on it? No. Like just... Jimmy Tarbuck's one is comic. Yes. Yeah, and yeah. what's his name? Um, Paul Daniels had magic. Did he? Yes. Yeah. M-A-G-1-C. Yeah. You know, I had a sticker on the boot which said no tools are kept in this van overnight, <laughs> right? As, as a gag. And actually, you know, I used to get it repaired at your bloke, Lenny. Yeah. Opposite um, Millwall there. Millwall Football Club. Mm. And I turned up the last time I saw him, he goes, Oh, he goes, Your um, car's in a uh, in a book. I said, Oh, great. Let's have a, you know, so he gets the book out. And there, sure enough, there's a photograph of the, of the boot of my car with the um, sticker on. I said, What's the book called? He said, It's called Shit London. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Len Mechanic was yeah. a genius, but he introduced me to a great expression, which of course now the expression snide, meaning a copy, you know, like a, not a genuine one, right. but like a fake sort of thing. And I wanted for an early Bentley that I had to get a pair of uh, wing mirrors for it. And he said, yeah, he said, I've got a, prop, a couple of the proper ones here. He said, because you don't want a snide mirror on there. The snide mm. mirror. Mm. Yeah. A great expression. No, I don't want a snide mirror. God, what a lovely idea. I love that word, snide. Mm. You can use it for anything, food as well. Mm. You know, if food isn't prepared particularly it's in a, the right it, way. It's a rotten mm. copper. Must be snide, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what a lovely word. Snide yeah. sausages. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but back to that Rolls, uh, Rolls Royce. Rolls. What? That's, <laughs> a, that's a good <laughs> word for it, isn't it? A Rolls. Yeah. yeah. Snide Rolls. I was, um, you know, most things he could fix then. But what happened was I was, I had a gig in uh, Twickenham. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll drive the uh, rolls. And because it's not far, I'll put the outfit on, you know, the big collar and the full Harry Hill thing. And uh, halfway down the Lower Richmond Road, I looked in the rearview mirror. I could smell burning. And I looked in the rearview mirror. I could see all this white smoke coming out of the... And the brakes, the back brakes had seized. So I get out and I'm standing by basically a Rolls Royce in the Harry Hill outfit with smoke pouring out. <laughs> oh, like no. Yeah, yeah, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I had a roller that had, on the on the roof, it had a, a dome over the... Uh, isn't, that, isn't, that Ma- isn't that Her Majesty the Queen's vehicle? No, no, it was just, one, just a dome. round dome. Yeah. You know, in metal, the, the, the roof had been bent into a dome shape. Like well, that. Somebody with an enormous head. No, <laughs> so you could wear a top hat whilst you were driving. <laughs> That was a massive lie. But really? if you had four, that's four important people in the car. Yeah. So four yeah. domes. But when you said it was a massive lie, but I think it was pretty um, useless because I think all of us saw through it. Of course, um, uh, Krug Champagne 
have a Rolls Royce Silver Shadow converted to a van, which is quite nice. We'll yeah. it down uh, the side. I thought you were going to say uh, converted to run on champagne. No, that would be exactly. I think it would be probably cheaper to run a Rolls Royce. Some, there are buses in Sweden that run on red wine. I've heard. This is another huge lie. No, it's not. This is this is this was told to me by Ulrika Johnson, who's Swedish, and she said there are buses that run on red wine. Yeah. Low quality red wine. I don't think they use. Yeah. No, 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 no. I need to get football. to an off license quickly. The sort of red wine you'd use for a foot bath, not not the not the top shadow yeah. stuff. Would top. you use that for a foot bath? No, just shadow the feet. I use for my foot yeah. bath. <laughs> so the Rolls Royce. That's uh, you got rid of that. I drove on to the gig with no rear brakes. Yeah. Using the handbrake. This is a showbiz story of determination yes. and, and professionalism. The show must go on. Yeah. And as I entered the building, I phoned up my this guy that, that Lenny had put me on to, and he answers. He goes, "What you done now?" <laughs> oh, that's, that's so annoying. Yeah, do the gig. By the time I came out, he's there with his low loader. Went back with him in the in the uh, cabin. Yeah. How about other forms of transport? Are you keen? Do you like the railways? Do you like travelling on trains? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you could tour, Alice de McGowan is very sort of uh, eco minded he would only do gigs but you know you'd only do gigs that were on the train i don't know if he's still touring but if you could do that but you you can't really can you well canal barge you were thinking of doing weren't you yeah you, that's, you, that's... You, you, utilizing <laughs> the, the inland waterway system and network of canals the yeah. amount of live performances i do it, i could do that quite easily i was <laughs> finished one in in birmingham in 1976 and then the next one would be 15 why years do, later why don't you do more I, I never really liked him. Really? Not really, no. Do you just get nervous? No, I don't get nervous at all. Oh. I find them quite dreary. I don't like doing the same thing twice. No. That's one thing. So I'd be use, I'm useless in plays. Both of you have got something in common, which of course is that you're both uh, exceptionally wonderful visual artists. Well, well will you please... Well. Do you, you. you no, I, I no insist. after you, your, your wood carv- <laughs> Let's tell us, tell us about your wood carvings. I like them. Uh what do you want to know? I basically, we had a, we got a tree in our front garden and a branch was chopped off and I said to the tree surgeon, would you cut that into 18 inch lengths or, you know, foot long length? With, with, in my, I had in mind that I might carve them. But I thought the first, I got the first one, I thought I'd carve something traditional, Jesus, right? So this is a, a piece of, you know, a, a length of branch, maybe four inches in diameter. So I start carving it, and as it um, appeared, you know, the, I took the bits off, it appeared less as Jesus, more as Akabilk. <laughs> nice, nice. With the beard. So what I did was I carved a bowler hat, the top into a bowler hat, yeah. and then I had these other, you know, five or uh, you know, six lengths. So I then did um, Dave Brubeck, Ooh. Thelonious Monk, the good thing about it was that it, it, I had never really listened to any of those musicians. And so while I was carving them, cool. I would put, you know, a bit of Thelonious Monk on or a bit of Dave Brubeck. I was, um, oh, what's the jazz club in uh, in New York where they all used to play? The, um, oh, Birdland. Yes. Oh, yeah. And I was in there seeing Charlie Parker's group who were all about 95. Yeah. Well, you aren't waiting for Charlie, were you? No, he'd no. long gone. Yeah. But I did go to the toilet and have a wee with two of Charlie Parker's band either side of me. Nice. Did you make any? Did you ask him any? You were in a great position to ask <laughs> questions. I didn't think it was prudent. <laughs> no, no, so, but I thought, you know, it's quite, you know, this is probably the last time I'll, I'm going to do. I'm going to have a wee with some jazz greats yeah. like this. Yeah. Is it right that? Um... Tom Jones has someone who stands behind him in the urinal to... Um... What, ward off? Yeah. Well, we all have that, don't you? Don't you have that? Oh. Someone stands behind yes, him. that's what Jim does for me. You know when you're, in a, you're standing in urinals and things can get a bit tense, the silences, yeah, yeah. you know, perhaps that you're in a ward ceremony and there's some silences and people look and that nod. And I've always wanted to sing that Spice Girls song, which is, shake it to the left if you're having a good time, shake it to the right if you're having a good time. I'd see your old chap. <laughs> I've never done it yet, but yeah. uh, there's always time. Yes, exactly. 
Anyway, we were talking about your art, the carving. Oh, the things, carving. Harry. What other thing? You, you, you also, um, you, you've done some sort of great pictures I've seen as well. Well, the reason I started painting in oil paint was that I did the Frank Skinner show and you didn't get paid. They bought you like a present and the present they bought me was a set of oil paints. And so I started uh, started painting, but they would never dry out these things. So what I then and what I started doing was mixing. Uh, I started tried all different. You know, there's hundreds of different things you can use, aren't there? And I, so I, I started using linseed oil, and I only found out literally yesterday that it slows drying. It does, especially in the amounts that I've been. So you mixing. can go back and work on it months later. Yeah, I, but I like the idea. I I mix all sorts of things with with oil paint. I started mixing bits of chalk from the cliffs at Dover because I was painting scenes of concrete listening dishes that are on the on the coast and I thought I'd just get the bits of chalk from the cliffs and grind that up and mix that in with the, the so you got a bit of the land in there as well and this morning I was um, experimenting <laughs> with mixing because if you're doing watercolors you can drop bits of salt on and it you're getting a good effect from dropping salt onto watercolour. So I thought, what if I drop on um, washing powder onto it? And I can tell you now, nothing <laughs> happens whatsoever. <laughs> but it's good to experiment. Yes, yeah. exactly. You wouldn't know otherwise. I like to travel on my... Because it's been difficult in this lockdown thing, travelling to places, so I travel on my model railway. Yeah, you know, I can go, well, uh, I can jump on the Eurostar, yeah. and I can go through some Pancras, through um, Euston, both top of those stations. Isn't a big? Isn't the main part of model railways about amassing it and getting it together rather than playing with it? A bit of both. Is well, it a bit of both? And of course, I was just the other day just researching. I was trying to build. I'm trying to make Rembrandt's cottage. Uh, what? Is it making it yourself. Well, make it more or less, yes. So I can have a little setting because I thought I'd quite like Rembrandt. Mm. And do you, have, do you have to get a building as a, a start that you can yes. then add on to? Exactly. You can then sort of knock around and put put some trees next to it and things. And yes. then get a little Rembrandt. Yes. Yeah, so well, I'm very fond of Rembrandt landscapes. He didn't do many landscapes, but they, so I was trying mm. to copy a Rembrandt landscape into the uh, into into the railway. I thought that'd be quite nice mm. for the people on the little train to look out at. Mm. If what about, yeah, I mean, a nice one would perhaps for the next project would be. Uh, Monet's um... a water lily garden sort of yeah thing. yeah that might be good I just did a quite a big work on the suburbs and I got some 1960s suburbs because I don't and in fact all over England there's very, very sort of suburbs that were built and they were connected by the new arterial roads and the dual carriageways without any central reservations and when you got there they were quite nice places to be whether it was in Sidcup or whether it was might in Barnet or wherever it was like Metroland sort of thing you know yeah. between Metroland so I've got these nice 1960s build Croydon's a very good example downtown Croydon of Bromley of, Bromley's another yeah um, and so forth and I've got the Frey Bentos Hotel that I've put in there <coughs> and mm. a cocktail bar yeah. and I go there and it's quite comfortable so when I'm observing that particular part of the layout I'll have a frothy coffee and um, right and, and maybe a, a wimpy, could, you know. Could you put um, a camera on, a tiny camera in the train that well, you can, so you could, like, look at it and imagine virtual, that you are like, going through the landscape? A well, virtual headset, a virtual... Well, actually, I think that I'm one of the only people that does have that because even in miniature Wunderland, which, are, as you will know, is one of the biggest uh, model railways in the world, uh, which is in Hamburg, uh, and started by these um, partners that had a, a huge dance... Uh, a hall uh, in these warehouses and they changed it into a model railway and they made a fortune because it's the biggest tra tourist attraction in the north of Germany. Anyway, in there there's a place with banks of screens with people looking at it. It looks like they're controlling the trains but in fact they're all just recordings. But I had a very nice fellow in a small shop in Victoria make me up a one-off unique thing and you can look out the front as it's going along. And as far what, like as via a monitor? Yes, via a TV screen. Yeah. Uh, and it's quite an excitement, I must say. Yes, you must come around and visit sometime. We get dressed up in the appropriate clothing of wherever we're going and, um, and yeah, off we go. The national so, dress of the... Uh, precisely, yeah. 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 On your railway, 
you very quickly go from Switzerland into. Well, now I've got, I've got, I've got the, my British suburbs. I've got an, a northern industrial area. So you have to take your clothes off and put a new outfit on every couple of seconds. Exactly. Really. Well, that's where the fun starts. Yeah, exactly. Or well, certainly a hat <laughs> and different <laughs> snacks. Are, that's it. You yeah. know, I've got the wimpy, as I say, where the uh, and then I get round to sort of Gentwerp, the Flemish port, and I've got a little glass of Stella beer, and I've got um, sausage and onions when I go through 1950s London. So mm. it's quite a lot of a uh, lot, lot of preparation when I get up there. But you do that presumably, don't you? I've got I've got a Greek national. The only national dress I have to hand is Greek national dress, which I have. You with the pom poms? Yeah. On the, have you actually got one? Yeah. The outfit? Yeah, I got it uh, from Greece. So you know, I ordered one because I had this joke, right? So and the idea was I would come on Greek national dress, and I would make no reference to it for you know ten minutes, and then after about ten minutes, I'd say. Um, I hear there's a big party in from Greece. And I, t- I take the hat off, throw it on the floor, I say, I'll kill that researcher. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, but the problem that it was... And then he's stuck with it for the yeah. rest. Yeah. yeah. And they've all paid to see the big collar, you know. Yeah. I, um, yeah. I was in Greece, I was in Athens, and I saw the, the guards in those national... And they, with the pom-poms on, and they do uh, a march as, that means that they have to kick the leg up. Yeah very high yeah. and this guard did it he kicked his, his leg up and then went flat on his back but because he was a guard I think he, he wasn't allowed to get back up again so he just laid on his back oh poor fella yeah. I thought you were going to With say his the, leg pom- in the, air. the pom-pom broke his fall <laughs> they are massive pom-poms as well. so you've got that do you wear it now I wore it on Des and Mel once and made no reference to it and he didn't ask you know Des O'Connor <laughs> he didn't ask and I didn't say anything <laughs> the hat is like a like a fez almost. Like a, a loose fez. Yeah. You've got a big, a big skirt. If yeah. We talk, we'll go through it. You've got a big skirt. You've got uh, like a white sort of, and it goes round and round and round. White stockings with garters, red shoes with pom-poms. You've got like a sort of long, it's like a uh, sleeveless sort of jacket thing that goes, you know, along mm. with brocade on it. And you've got this hat. Did and you've got like you a big it? baggy shirt underneath with big sort of, but what is it? But that's the Greek national dress. I'm just trying to think. What is the um, English or the, I suppose the Scottish national dress would be the sort of kilt and all of that. Yeah, the beef feeder, is it? Is it? But yes, I mean, did, well, that's the default. Or John Bull, maybe. Mm. So I like the you know the Welsh ladies. Yes. The oh, big, yeah. big big black dress and the hat and all that. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the Dutch one. I like that. I like those <laughs> ladies' Dutch hats. Oh, yes. There you are... should get one of those for you when you're passing through well, Holland. Well, I, I might do, actually. I mean, I, I, I tend to put on Rembrandt's smock when I'm doing going again for the Netherlands. But, um, the clocks. Do you know the other um, the rails, clocks, yeah. railway enthusiasts like Rod Stewart, Roger Daltrey? Yes. yes. I expect you all get together at some point, don't you, and discuss it. I, I did visit... Roger Daltrey's layout, so he's got a fantastic layout. He doesn't, it, he doesn't did you think, he never his, about it. Did you have any jealousy? Him. No, I, it, it's a curious thing. You just have quiet admiration, really. But yeah. did you think, oh, man's better than it is? No, I didn't know. It was neither. No, it's 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 not really not the way that it works in the in the modern railway world. In fact, I gave him a tree, and I and, and I was allowed to plant it. I think somewhere yeah. on the layout. Uh, I also gave him a which he, he he didn't seem so pleased with. I which I had, which was a nuclear waste danger being moved train. Uh-huh. Uh, and I said, there, you can have that for a bit of danger, but he didn't seem, he preferred the tree, I think. Well, you, there. Is there ever a world where you get Rod Stewart's layout, Roger Daughtry's layout, your own layout, and connect them all up by a, um, a piece of track? It's the same gauge, is it? You're all on the same gauge. Well, yes, but I mean, you'd have to in, in, in those circumstances. I mean, the, the distance between where we all live is so great. And I think Rod Stewart's one is in, is in California. So, I mean, you'd have to have a track that went sort of, so 8,000 miles or something, you know. Mm. Are you six, saying six, no? Miles. Yes. <laughs> no, absolutely, absolutely no. But it's the same, it's the pleasure. It's like it, like you say, talking about the painting, Harry. It's the act of doing it. Yes. It's the leisure time act of doing it. It's a true hobby. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, and also, you don't have to travel. You are travelling within it. But the other pleasure of railway modelling is going to the shops around the world and finding mm. that treasured item. And there was a particularly fine shop in Germany, in Berlin, and I got in a taxi from the hotel. Taxi won't wait there for me. I'm going to be in there for half an hour. And it was really great. He had shelves of buildings, model buildings, that went up. It was a tall shop. It was a tall shop, maybe 15, 20 feet into the air. 
endless marvellous second-hand boxes of treasure and, and locomotives and stuff. So I said to the man, I said, oh, there's a, you've got a lovely station, but it's right up at the top. Can I have a look? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll get you the ladder and my assistant will show you. And the assistant came out and he was a small man with a Beatles haircut, mm. but probably maybe in his late 40s, with very pale skin and the fingers of a concert pianist, very bony, thin fingers, and a medallion around his polo neck shirt. And this and very thick glasses, and <laughs> he, he. I'm liking the sound of yes, this fellow anyway, already. And he and he said and he, his English wasn't very good, and unfortunately my German wasn't very good. But we managed to communicate enough. And then the ladder went up, and I said, actually, there's another one up there. There's a, I can see you've got a lovely signal box at the top of the shelf there. So we moved the ladder along, and I climbed up. At this point, I said, look down, and he removed his um, polo neck. And it was in a little string vest now with very thin, pale arms <laughs> and was clinging to my leg in a loving way um, and had become very affectionate. Is this me. a lie? No, this is all <laughs> absolutely true. And I had to sort of think, look, get, get off my leg. Yeah. I'm just buying this stuff. I don't... Uh, don't you think that in some ways the internet has spoiled the fun of collecting? Yes, do you collect anything? You've else? got a lot of big collection of, of rubbish, haven't you? Well, not so much. I, my wife is more the uh, mad collector. She's got a, a tin, tobacco tin, full of Easter egg foils from the 70s from when she was in. Well, that's a pretty useful thing to have. She's got all the um, different wrappers from Lemonade Sparkles from the same era. So they'd be sl all just slightly different, you know, 5p, 7p or whatever it was. So, yeah, she's a... she's a, And she collects, oh, you know, Shirley Temple memorabilia and all sorts of, you know... A lot of useful stuff. But and also toys. She used to collect a lot of, uh, you know, vintage toys. But, but the thing was, you would go to these toy... F she would go to these toy fairs and you'd be rubbing shoulders with all these other like-minded... Mm. But now... Yeah. And a bit like, you know, collecting records or any of this stuff. It, it used to be potluck, a lot more, but now... And meeting unusual characters, as I was... Yes. Yes. Yes, and I think that's the sad part of it, not meeting the characters, not being able to say, come on, what's the best you can do on that, mm. and negotiating, and having sharp intake of breath, no, I'm not going to pay that, and then coming back and all that sort of thing. I, I enjoy it, I think you're... Yeah. I, but, I mean, I would recommend collecting. I mean, I collect things, you know, you collect things, don't you? But is the, the, the trick is, once you've got more than two of something, you've got a collection. You start, your collection has started, whatever it is. Yeah. You know, if you've got more than two pairs of shoes, you've got a collection of shoes. You've got more than, you know, whatever it is, so then you you need to add to it to, to and hone the collection down. There we are. And here's a message from our sponsors. Jules, I notice you comb your hair over to the east and never vary from this direction. Well, that's right. Isn't it the only direction a man of my rank and standing may brush his hair? No. With this new multi-directional hairbrush, you may select north, east, south or west at the flicker of a switch. Look. Excellent. Now I'll be able to attend all of my functions without offending any government or religion. The multi-directional cast iron chain drive hairbrush by Sunblessed. <laughs> sunblessed. <laughs> I love to travel by air. For me, it's the you know it's as much a part of the holiday as the holiday. Flicking through films that the you would films, never watch. Yeah, old films that you wouldn't watch. I love I it. find that, that with a small screen, it's throwaway. So I've, I'm never going to watch that film with... Um, I won't mention any names, <laughs> but... <laughs> as, as I am here. <laughs> yeah, but occasionally you're surprised, aren't you? You watch something, you think, I'd never watch it, and you... We were talking about this the other day. You see, I think if you see a film on the... On the plane you kind of it could, I find it could put me off but also I think I couldn't have a drink on a plane I once just had one sort of small drink and went to sleep and I was sketching this little sketch I can't even remember what it was a little sort of landscape or something and I sort of fell asleep <laughs> landscape on a plane well, well it's, yeah it's, I should have been sketching the plane but it was just a seat in front of me so it seemed a bit boring but, you know, I was working up my little landscape and, and, I, and I sort of woke up and I looked and somebody had drawn very very babyish great big sort of birds like sort of like if you imagine a, th a yeah. three year old might draw a, like a, a bird w. like a w like a yeah. bird had drawn it in a very sort of common a way v. and all over this lovely drawing i've been doing like there were sort of six of these birds and i thought the, my neighbor has snatched my pen and done that while i've been asleep How dare, and i was about to sort of say excuse me madam have you have you just well, look what you've done while i've been asleep but of course 
as I'd been falling asleep, you know, I'd done it. And the trouble is that on a plane, the oxygen levels aren't quite right. So you so all your judgment thinking. goes. I wasn't thinking. <laughs> Fortunately, I stopped myself before accusing this poor woman on the plane. I did a similar thing. With my drawing. I was uh, on a very bumpy train. It was like I was trying to draw, and it wasn't happening because I'd go over a, a, a bit of rail, and it, just, yeah. it was all going all over the place. So I thought, I'm going to close my eyes, put the pen down on the on the pad, and then just let the bumps take. And I, so I closed my eyes. Yeah, and uh, and then the next thing was the ticket collector was asking for me for my ticket, and then just had, must have just seen me just doing a horrendous <laughs> scribble on the paper. Yeah, Autom- is it automatic drawing or whatever yeah. it is? Yes. That thing of um... automatic drawing and writing. They yeah. do. So you just write automatic random things that come to your mind, or just yeah. draw a shape or a line that yeah. comes to mind. And there's the other one which you can do where you put the you put your pad under a table and try and draw the person sitting in front of you without looking at the pad. Well, you can't if it's under a table. You can't see it, so there's might, no might, peeping. Might, might be a glass table. Well, yeah, I, I, <laughs> that's ruined that experiment. <laughs> I've had an idea of, uh, which I haven't tried yet, which is a way of recording speech in a visual way that isn't writing, and I'm I'm calling it um, automimetic communication. And what it is. You attach sponges to your top and bottom lip. Yes. Which are soaked I'll in... I'll do this now then, hang on, yeah. Soaked in ink. Yeah. And you have a roll of paper, okay, which is moving past you at a particular rate. So it yes. could be, you know, a, someone pulling it. Yes. And as it goes past you, you, set, you, you talk. So you say, uh, hello, my name is Harry Hill. And that will leave the, the marks of your speech on this paper that in, in some way could be then... De- be deciphered into have you done it i haven't tried it yet well but won't it be like there's there's time left in the day forgive me for saying this but when you do when you're doing your auto mimetic communication yeah doesn't it just look like a load of sort of blurred lipstick well yes it's kind of like action painting isn't it it should be that if i say it's like handwriting so if i say hello you're you saying hello would look similar but slightly different i think it's probably worth filming (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you have to film it. Yeah. I'll get the equipment ready. Hold on. So you get two sponge. I've got some sponges in my studio, so I could yeah. glue them on. Well, your beard and moustache would sort of almost... Yeah. Mm, or could you just do it with... Why do you have to have sponges on? Could you just put use your lips? I think probably best to do it without the sponges and just do it with the mouth. I don't think you get very far. Hmm. You might get hello. Well, we'll see. <laughs> It's, but it is a kind of action. I walked in on an action painting party once on the King's Road in the 70s, and it was a big, huge piece of paper with a load of naked people writhing around in it in, in blue paint. Well, I had that with Anna Corbera, who's a great artist, and she rented my house over the road here at the time when we lived there, and she decorated the studios here at the time. This is, and anyway, but she wanted to do a, a, a painting, and she put a canvas on the floor and then sort of threw herself naked at it, which covered it with paint, which then made the impression of her sort of naked on the, the canvas. And, in fact, it left the impression on the floor as well. And an impression on you as well. Yes, yes. And, 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 a deposit. and I did go not long ago to a, a party, an art party in New York where there was a great big long table and everybody was just drawing. And some people were drawing automatically at random without looking and just everybody was doing it was like kind of really out there it was like a 1960s art party and I got a bit confused and frightened by the whole thing so I just sketched the air conditioning unit that was on the wall quietly to myself I I think people should have parties like that again yeah well maybe I will would you both come well yeah we'll we'll, we can go to your mouth uh, automimetic yeah well I think we've discovered that here today that's been a first yeah someone part of me thinks someone must have done it already it seems to me such a sort of obvious idea that someone must have tried it everything's been tried isn't it automimetic I don't know it might not have it well can you find out I will find out is it mimetic or mimetic Uh, maybe you can think of mimetic maybe you get something that's easier to say yeah well I think the long name gives it an air of mystery yes and and and, and skill yeah I am what's the what was it auto auto don't tell him don't tell him mimetic (laughs) mimetic Mim-etic. Mimetic. Mimetic. Auto-mimetic. Like Auto-mimetic. Yeah. 
Automatic, automatic, automatic drawing. <laughs> automatic communication. 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 Auto AMC. AC. AMC. AMC. Automatic yeah. yeah. communication. Right. We we'll call it AMC. Yes. It's wonderful to have had you here as our guest today, Harry Hill. Thank the you so much. The birthplace of automimetic communication. It it's is. here. Yeah. There's a new movement. Well, there goes Harry. Driving off into the... Um, I'd say it was a sunset, but it's cloudy day. But he's driving off in an old Rolls Royce. Yes. With a... Um, with a bubble on the top for his top hat and, yes. and Greek costume. And his automimetic communication equipment in his boot. Yeah. Good luck to him. Yes, what a marvellous fellow. This podcast was produced and edited by Molly Stewart. Sound engineers were James Stewart and George Latham. <laughs>